Hey guys, welcome back. Lars is here again for Tots Plus, and in the next couple of parts, we're going to go ahead and start finishing off these inner pieces of the threads. Um, probably in this part, we're going to go ahead and create um, this connection piece that holds these two pieces together, and hopefully, we can finish that off in this part. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create this first cylinder that you can see over there. So just going to go into my side view and we're going to use this as a rough reference just for the size and so on so we're not going to try to make it um, too complicated okay so let's go ahead and use a cylinder you can also use a pipe but I'm just going to use a cylinder and probably it would have been better if we started doing this in our front view so let's go ahead and do that so I'm just going to go ahead and drag one out roughly and now I'm just going to go into my side view to drag out a rough um, height as well. And I can go ahead and scale this and move it where it needs to be. Probably it's going to sit somewhere around there. I'm just going to zoom in a bit more and try to get this to be the right size, okay? So it's probably going to scale this up this way a little bit more something like that and as you can tell I'm not following the reference completely um, I'm going to improvise on this a tiny bit okay so now that I have it in the rough position just going to come in here and we're going to go ahead and um, just isolate this piece just so you can easier select these faces around here so I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these And make sure I don't have anything else selected. Come out for isolation mode. And we're going to go ahead and hit extrude. And I'm just going to get down my edit mesh tab again. Go into my side view. And go ahead and extrude this part. And once we extrude it outwards, we're just going to go ahead and scale this down a bit. Like so. Okay. So after we have that, um, we actually gonna go ahead and duplicate this piece I think well we probably should have done that before we've done that part so I'm just gonna go ahead and undo that quick and while I have this cylinder I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this scull it down a bit and move it down so this is gonna sit roughly around here like so and now we can go ahead and extrude that next part. I'm just going to go ahead and scale this down a bit more, I think. Okay. And now we're just going to go ahead, select all these faces. And this is why we isolated the first time, just so it's easier to click these faces. I've forgotten to do it this time. So I'm going to have to go around and move around in my viewport. So now I'm going to go ahead and extrude, go into my side view, go ahead and drag this out, and then scale it down, like so. Okay, so this is the main shape that we're looking for, pretty much. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and, and drag this out a bit more, probably around here, I think. All right. So it looks pretty good. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in, um, if you have a look on this piece, uh, you can sell it. You can see that little indent. So that shows that there is actually a hole inside it. Uh, it's just a tiny little detail, but it does make a difference, okay? So that's what we're going to do next. Let's just um, go ahead and in our perspective mode, I'm going to go ahead and isolate this piece and we can go ahead and make the hole in this piece by selecting all these faces okay and now it's a matter of just extruding bits so I'm going to go ahead and extrude and in my offset after I slow down my slider I'm going to just drag out a tiny offset like so so first I'm doing the inner edge that will uh, let it smooth properly. 
I'm going to go ahead and extrude it again and then offset I'm going to go ahead and drag it in probably around there and extrude again, offset in, extrude again and now we can start going inwards so I'm going to go ahead and drag this in a tiny bit to give us that um, loop that we need and just going to go ahead and drag it in a bit, not too much and then extrude again move in, extrude again, scale, in, and we're done. Okay, and while we're here, we're also going to go ahead and add in these this edge loop around here, just so it will smooth properly in here and also here. And now we can go around the back, and we're also going to need an edge loop around here. Okay, and let's go ahead and select all these faces. And let's go ahead and extrude this as well. And offset, and give it a tiny bit, 0.01. So that will give us that top loop that we need. Extrude again, offset, 0.01. Extrude again. And we can now start pushing this inwards. Oh, actually, we're going to go ahead and. Um, scale this again, I'll give it an offset of 0.01 and then start going in alright so this will give us a really nice hard edge so now that I have that extrusion we're gonna go ahead and extrude again and start pushing this in probably around there, again we don't have to do it too much extrude, push in if I have the right angle selected, there we go. And I can again, I managed to click the right arrow. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude again one last time, offset 0.1. And we're done, okay? So let's go there. Come out for isolation mode. And, well, actually, you can go back to isolate and smooth it to see how this will smooth and it looks pretty good we're going to go ahead and add in an extra loop in here just so it will smooth a little bit better like so and let's go ahead and look around this other side make sure that these are smoothing nicely as well and this bit is a little bit too soft here so this is going to go ahead and add another one down here and now it should be a little bit better. All right, so that looks great. So I'm gonna come out of my isolation mode and basically this cylinder gonna to have to be scaled up a bit. So I'm just gonna smooth this, scale this up a bit, probably around there. Okay, so that looks great. So let's go ahead and create the next piece. So basically there's just um, two cylinders sitting inside here, so nothing too complicated. Pretty easy stuff. So let's go ahead and do them. We're going to go ahead and use this cylinder um, as our sort of base that we're going to duplicate around. Or, well, actually, yep, we can use this. So I'm just going to go ahead and isolate this and add in all the loops that we need. So I'm just going to go ahead and select, if I go into my side view and select all the faces and then shift drag in the middle, this way we got the top and the bottom faces selected and then we can go ahead and extrude this and give it a 0.01 offset. So this way we get done both sides at the same time. Now we're just going to use our insert edge loop tool around this bit this bit let's go ahead and smooth okay so that looks pretty good let's go ahead and come out of our isolation mode and see how that looks and i'm just going to go ahead and move this in a bit so it looks something like that and then we're going to go ahead and uh, <coughs> sorry we're going to go ahead and duplicate this drag it out so this will be the piece that actually joins up to this one 
go ahead and scale this down so it fits in there. And basically this is what this is going to look like. We might go ahead and add in another hole around here so it looks a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this again, duplicate it and move it up. And this way we get the same, um, the same sort of size on both the top and the bottom, okay? So before we go ahead, we're going to go ahead and add in another hole into this just so it don't look so flat around here. It's more believable that this pipe is actually going inside. So let's go ahead and just isolate this. So we're going to need all these faces. Select them all and then come out for isolation mode. And this way we'll see how much we actually got to go ahead and extrude this, okay? So we're going to go ahead and extrude. And in the offset, we're going to go ahead and drag it roughly, probably around here. We can go ahead and extrude this one more time with offset, like so. Okay. And extrude it again, push it in a bit. And now we can go ahead and, um, well, actually, we can't really see what we're doing what we sort of know what we are doing. So you can either go ahead and deselect this, select the pipe again, isolate, select all these faces again and do that. Or you can just sort of know, um, sort of do it by the way I'm doing it. So now I know that we added in that edge loop. So instead of doing that, I'm just gonna go ahead and press extrude again and just push it in. We can also do it with X-ray mode so you see what we're actually doing. So once I've done that, we go ahead and extrude again push in a bit and this way I can see how much I'm actually extruding and once we have that edge loop we can just scale inwards and we're basically done. So I'm just going to go ahead and come out here and go ahead and smooth this. Okay so that looks a little bit better and we basically got our top joint piece created. Uh, I'm now We are now going to go ahead and quickly make this bottom piece that's fairly simple so if I just isolate it for you guys and show you what this is all about it's really simple uh, we're just going to go ahead and start with a cube so let's go ahead and come into our side view and I got this detail off uh, a different reference image so you can't really see it on here but it is there so we're just going to go ahead and drag out a rough size and drag out height and my front view. Just gonna make sure that this is roughly the right size. And then drag it in position. If we if I turn off the threads, we should be able to see what we're doing. So I'm just moving this into the center of our pipe. Okay, and now we can go ahead and see how much this piece is rotated. Rotated 44.94, so you're gonna rotate this the same amount. And then I can go ahead and move this into position. So I'm just going to go into my perspective and make sure that it roughly sits in the right place. And it seems to be, it just seems to be a bit too big. So you're going to go ahead and scale it down just a tad. Push it up a bit more. And it still seems to be a bit too, um, too thick. So I'm just going to go ahead and scale it down this way. Okay, so basically this is the thing that we're looking for. Uh, it's still a bit too long, so I'm just gonna go ahead and push it in a bit more. Okay, so I like that, that looks great. Uh, so once we have that, we just basically got to add that little indentation. So let's go ahead and do that with our insert edge loop tool. I'm gonna go ahead and set it on multiple edge loops in two, and we're gonna click in there so we get an equal amount. Set this back to default. And it seems like we're also going to need one edge loop roughly around here. And let me just have a look on this piece. Yep. And this way we can go ahead and um, just delete these faces that we don't need. And basically now we just got to fill up the hole. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate this. And let's go ahead and fill up the edge. So you're going to select these three edges. And go ahead and hit extrude and it freaks out because of the offset so I'm going to turn that down and then I'm just going to 
press W to go ahead and drag these faces down where they should be. So I'm fairly close, so I'm just going to leave them where they are and then use the Merge Vertex tool to go ahead and snap these into the right places. Like so. Okay, so that's great. Let's go ahead and add in the edge loops that we need. So this will keep its shape and we're done. So we're going to need one around here. It is a, uh, a rectangle or rectangular shape. So the edge loop should be really easy to add in and no complicated stuff really. So this is the bit when the edge loops are easy to add in. So you shouldn't worry about it too much. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And this is where my singing starts normally. Um, if you guys have been following along from the very beginning, in the first couple of parts, I probably did sing because those were the bits when it wasn't too challenging yet. But later on in the series, it, I did have to concentrate quite a bit to follow along properly and not make too many mistakes. But luckily, I get a little break every now and then when I can do my little sing for you guys. <laughs> So that looks great. It seems like we're missing a loop here. And um, we should be pretty much there, I think. Let's go ahead and smooth it and see if we get any freaking out happening. We do around here. So let's go ahead and see what we missed out on. We missed out the loop going around here. All right. So that should be fixed now. Let's go ahead and smooth this again, see if it's still freaking out. But it seems to be pretty good. Okay, so that's great. Let's go ahead and come out of isolate and see how this is looking overall. And as you guys can tell, it probably looks pretty much identical. My scale is a little bit off, I think, but not too much. You can just go ahead and always scale this down a bit. I'll probably push it in just a tad. Okay, so that's great. Uh, we got this piece um, finished. Uh, I now can go ahead and safely delete these because we don't need them as a reference anymore. So let's go ahead and turn back on our threads. And that looks pretty cool. Okay, so the next couple of parts, um, we're gonna go ahead and start connecting all this stuff up with this complicated uh, bits and bobs that are inside here that I still gotta figure out how to do. So um, as soon as I get them figured out and modeled up, I'll show you guys what it's going to look like, the actual finished thread. And then we can go ahead and um, start modeling those pieces, okay, and use my um, model as a reference instead of trying to uh, figure it out while we're going along. So hope you guys enjoy this part, and I'll see you guys in the next part.